Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I'm playing around with one of my favorite glues, if not my favorite glue. I love the glossy version of the Mod Podge. And I'm just using some old fabric scraps that I've cut up into some really tiny little pieces to make some hard, kind of plastic feeling fabric coasters. All right, so for this project, you do need a few materials. You need the Mod Podge, obviously. I've got an old cookie sheet here that I'm going to be using. Uh, I've got a sharpening stone. Then this is just a, the, the cardboard core from a roll of packing tape that I've wrapped in a little bit of saran wrap. Uh, I just have my favorite pig pen here. You're going to want the tuna can and then you need another can with uh, the same size lid. I've got some measuring spoons here, a pair, uh, just a regular table knife, my fabric, some good sharp scissors to cut up the fabric, parchment paper. You're going to want to scale so that you can weigh the fabric so that you get the same amount of fabric in all of your coasters. Um, I have two different kinds of can openers here and I'll show you why you probably want to use both of them if you, if you have both of them. And then you're going to want um, a metal clamp. This is kind of a larger one maybe than you need, but this is what we had, so this is what I'm using. So this is a tuna can that I have used a safety can opener to open, and if you're not familiar with those, they look a little bit different than your regular can openers. They don't have a, a handle on them to, to pinch anything, and basically they remove the can lid from the side rather than from the top, so it leaves you with um, a less sharp edge on both pieces of the can. And since you're going to be using both pieces, um, but you're going to be kind of primarily using this, touching this piece, you kind of want to keep this edge as clean as possible. And, and so that's why I recommend using the safety can opener. But the other thing is that you want to use this piece of the lid to compress uh, the fabric down so you need it to fit inside of the can so what I found is sometimes this works better than others but if you use the safety can opener to open your can and then put the lid back on the can you should be able to go back with a regular can opener and separate the lid from the little rim that's on it right now. So that almost worked. I'm going to have to work on this edge a little bit here. Hopefully I can just... It's not an exact science. Anyway, I'll have to work a little bit to get the rest of this off, but I need this piece to fit inside the can. And then the reason that I uh, suggested that you have another can with the same size uh, dimension, or the same, what am I trying to think of, radius, um, <laughs> what's that called, circumference, that's what I'm talking about. They have the same circumference because you're going to want at least two layers of lid to compress your fabric just because it's not, you know, the lid isn't super stiff. If you have the ability to cut a hole the perfect saw, or a, yeah, if you have a hole saw that you can cut a piece of wood or something that wouldn't bend at all, then you wouldn't need two layers or anything. But so you might find that you even want um, more 
lids than just two. So I have some tin snips. I'm probably just going to cut the rest of this off here. And then, like I said, I'm going to add a, at least one more lid to make my uh, mold. So for each coaster, you need an ounce of fabric. And I would recommend getting a fairly accurate scale. I was using a cheaper scale earlier, but you can see this one will um, register in tenths of an ounce. I think that's the right math. I don't know. Uh, anyway, you can measure before you cut the fabric just so you know how much you have to cut up. But I would also recommend after you've cut it up that you weigh it again just to make sure that you're back to an ounce. And this is uh, obviously a little tedious and time consuming. You want some pretty small pieces. Actually, this isn't the best piece to demo, but I usually cut my fabric into kind of strips and then just try to cut a couple layers at a time. It's a great activity for, you know, sort of that mindless, keep your hands busy while you're watching TV. And, uh, but it does take a little while because you do want fairly compact little pieces. So fortunately, I have already cut a bunch of denim, so we're going to skip ahead to the next step. So you need one uh, piece of parchment paper the size of your can. So I just traced around a little piece of parchment paper with my pen, and then I just need to cut it out around the circle here. This step gets a little bit messy, but I've got my one ounces, one ounces, I've got my one ounce of cut up denim here and my measuring spoon and I'm just going to add some Mod Podge. I've been using about two tablespoons and then once you get all of the glue in there you just get your fingers nice and sticky and mix it all together you don't want it too wet but you want to make sure that every piece has some contact with the glue. So I think that's pretty good. I'm going to try to get my fingers cleaned off here and we'll be back to put it in the mold. Before I put my mixture in my mold, I'm on this one I'm going to try and do a little uh, customization, I guess. So I'm going to put my initial on the coaster. And to do that, I think I'm just going to brush a little coat of the Mod Podge on the bottom of the can here because I don't want the little scrap pieces to get underneath it. You don't want to use too much glue. I don't know. This is an experiment, so I haven't done this yet. All right, so I want to put it in sort of upside down backwards. What am I saying? The C is universal, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. But I, you want to center it as much as you can. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my mixture here. I want to make it as level and smooth as possible. And then there's a little sort of rim on the bottom of the can. You want to make sure that you've got that filled in nice and compact. And that's what the packing paper tube is for because your can lids kind of fit a little bit loosely. You know, they don't touch right to the edge. So I found that this plastic or this uh, 
packing paper tape roll just fits in the can nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and just press the edges into this rim. And then fill in the rest here. Try to keep it fairly level so you don't have one side thicker than the other. And I'm going to press the edges again. The FedEx man is across the street, so you might hear my dogs going crazy in about a minute. Or maybe they'll sleep through it, I don't know. Alright, so I've got the edges compressed, and now I want to lay my pa uh, parchment paper over the top. And I actually have three can lids here because I don't want it to bow too much. I want kind of even pressure across the whole thing. I'm just going to put that in there. Kind of compress it with my fingers. And then I'm ready to add my clamp. You shouldn't have a lot of glue oozing out from this because it really the fabric soaks most of it up so if you have too much you know if you get a lot of glue oozing out you probably want to use less on your next piece you want to keep this in the center as much as possible and you want to tighten it pretty tight all right I'm gonna prep one more and then the, la uh, the next step is to put this in the oven for about two hours at 350. So on my second coaster, you can see that I ended up leaving a little bit of the fabric in the bowl. And I, because the tin can was filling up so fast, so you might want to experiment a little bit with how much fabric you use for each of yours. Some of the uh, more lofty fabrics are probably going to be you're going to need less of some of the more dense fabrics you might need more of you can kind of just play around with it I actually ended up tapering down my fabric weight to 0.8 instead of one full ounce just because I thought that made a nicer dimension once I was finished but certainly you can play around with it if you want a thicker coaster you can use more fabric if you want a thinner one you can use less I think I may have said uh, that I these go in the oven for two hours at 350, but it's two hours at 250, so it's a very low heat. And I'm just going to take them out and let them cool off for about a half an hour before I take the clamps off. All right, this is where you find out how successful you were. So I'm just going to unclamp these. And then the table knife just helps you get the lid out of there. And the parchment paper just really helps for the to release the lids, especially if any glue or anything oozes out. You want to only wait about a half an hour for this because you do want there to be a little bit of pliability. Is that a word? Did I just make up a word? I don't know. Pliability in uh, this fabric to pull it out. So you can, you might not be able to tell this, but I, it, it does bend a little bit. I'm able, which is why I'm able to get it out of the can. So it's holding together well. Hopefully my initial stuck. I don't know. We'll see. All right. It's pretty uh, subtle, but it did work. So you might want to use a different, you know, more contrasting color. But you can see maybe that 
this is still kind of pliable right now. So you want to trim off any really rough edges on the bottom. This doesn't have too many and sometimes you can just kind of squish them back down. I didn't do the best job on this one of getting them pressed, getting the bottom pressed into this, uh, you know, bottom ridge here. Or no, what am I looking at? Yeah, no, there's some, yeah, there's some gaps in it. I don't know how well you can see any of this, but I, and I do have a little bit of difficulty getting them totally um, even, but I think this one is a success. So let's look at the other one. You just want to let them harden up uh, at room temperature from here on out. I think I probably needed a little bit more glue on this one. But I'm going to trim a little bit off the bottom, let them both harden up, and then kind of reevaluate. So I'm just using a regular pair of scissors to kind of chop off anything that's sticking up too much. And again, I missed getting it all in the ridge here, so interesting. All right, I'm going to let those harden up and we'll be back. So the final step here, if you need to, once your uh, coasters have completely hardened, if you have some rough edges on the bottom, this one's not too bad really, uh, you can go ahead and just kind of file them down with the sharpening stone. And just a couple of other comments. I made these four with a different scale uh, to weigh the fabric. So they ended up a little bit thicker. So I think, I'm not really sure. I might, I might like this uh, width better. So maybe eight tenths of an ounce is a little bit better uh, quantity to use. And then the other thing that happened, I... Um, and it may have something to do with the fabric and something to do with how much glue I put in and how much compression there was. But you can see in this one, which I also like the way it finished better, that it's got a much smoother finish and the, the uh, pieces of fabric seem to be compressed together in a much more uh, solid way. Whereas this one, you can see the little bits of fabric and it's not very shiny so I think that I didn't have quite enough pressure and I didn't have enough glue on this. I am going to go back and just put a coat of the Mod Podge on the outside just to see if I can get a little bit shinier finish but it's kind of up to you how you want your piece to look but if you want it to be really shiny and kind of look like a solid piece I would use more glue and more compression. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this kooky little project, a, a great way to use up your fabric scraps. And if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, think about becoming a subscriber. And of course, I always want to see you back here soon in the lab.